Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wonder why day after day I tell you about the superiority of Horlicks malted milk over all imitations, here's the reason. Every day, thousands of new users of malted milk are being created. Now, these new users don't know about the many cheap imitations of Horlicks that have recently appeared in some stores. They don't know that where Horlicks uses only full cream milk, these imitations often use just skim milk. That where Horlicks uses only choice selected wheat and finest malted barley, these imitators use raw cocoa, inferior malt, and a lot of ordinary sugar. And that whereas the ingredients in these imitations are just mixed up together, Horlicks uses a special vacuum process that preserves the minerals and vitamins. That's why I always say get Horlicks, the quality malted milk that really gives results. Horlicks can be obtained at any druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, it seems that nothing can avert a movie war in Pine Ridge. Yesterday, after Lum had threatened him with bodily harm over a new partnership offer, Squire Skint declared that he would prevent the Pine Ridge Planetarium from ever opening its doors. Well, at the last moment, Dick Huddleston joined forces with Lum and Abner. And in spite of Squire's threats, as we look in on the old fellows today, we find them hard at work trying to get their theater finished just as soon as possible. Listen. Come on down, Abner. Here comes Dick Huddleston. He must have just got back from the county seat. Well, it's time to go eat supper anyway. Oh, it's way after six o'clock. Yeah, I heard Walter Bates' sawmill whistle long ago. Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, howdy, howdy. Did you get the seat? Yeah, I got 250, Lom. I ran them for three months. Well, good for you. <laughs> uh, Granny, that's one worry off my mind. <laughs> well, they said they'd send them out tomorrow, but uh, Well, that is fine. Now, what'd you have to pay for them? Well, I got them down a little by renting them for three months that way. I got the whole bunch for $35 a month. He won't fit this first. Well, that's a heap better than buying them. Yeah, yeah. Well, we sure appreciate you looking after that for us, Dave. Oh, I was glad to do it, Lum. I had to be in town there anyway. I've been getting along today. Well, pretty good. We got the box office bill. Ain't set it out there in front of you. Ain't, ain't put the glass in it yet. Uh-huh. Uh, where's Abner? Why, he's up there in the booth. I hollered at him just now for him to come down. Time to stop and eat. He's been up there all afternoon fooling with that machine, trying to learn how to manipulate it. Oh, the machine got here today, huh? Yeah, yeah that's right. He come after you left. Yeah. It's all set up and everything. The fellow that brung it out hope us get it up there in the booth and set it up for us. Well, you, you fellas be ready to open up here in a few days now, won't you, Lum? Well, yeah, I called up the folks on the party line this morning and made an announcement. Told them we was going to have our grand opening Saturday night. Saturday night? Yeah, but I don't know why I got back here and got to looking around. There's a heap more work to do around here than I thought there was. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to get busy if you get things ready by Saturday. Now, here comes that now. He just carried away with that machine. Loves machinery. Hey, Doggett, I believe I about got that thing figured out, Lum. One or two gadgets there, and I ain't found... Oh, well, howdy, Dick. Hello, Abner. Now, Dick was just telling me he got the chairs for us today, Abner. Coming out tomorrow. Well, good, good. Never had to buy them, neither. Just rented them. Well, <laughs> old Squire will have a fit when he sees them coming out here, won't he? <laughs> yeah, he's going to have a lot of fits before this thing's over, about you. Uh, what all you got to do now, Lum, to get it ready? Well, we've got the front to paint. Of course, that don't have to be did before we open up, but uh, it'd look a heap better if it was. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And we've got to set the chairs up when they get here. Well, that won't be much of a job. And you might get the truck driver to set them up where you want as he unloads them for you. You mean just set them down through the house here? Yeah, as he brings them in, you might as well just set them up along where you want them. Get yeah. them back to you know. You can do that. Sure. Well, sure. <laughs> hey, well, now, we ain't got them wires put in here for the electricity, neither, now. Yeah, Granny. I know there was something. I, I meant to call a light company there at the county seat today when I was over at the store using the phone. Yeah, well, you better get started on that, Lum. That might be quite a job getting this place wired up. Yeah, I'll call him up when I get over to the house. Well, uh, you better just come over to the house and eat supper with me, Lum, if we're going to come back down here and work tonight. 
Ain't no use for you to take time to cook your own dinner. Oh, oh no. No, Abner. It's nice, though, but I wouldn't want to put Elizabeth to all that bother. Why, it won't be no trouble. She can just lay extra place. Might not have no fancy vittle. She's been in the field all day, but now you're welcome to what we got. No, no, I wouldn't want to impose none on you. I can fix myself up a little snack of work at the house or some kind. Yeah, all right. Of course, if you're just bound and determined for me to go, I reckon I could. Well, just do as you like about it. We'd love to have you and all that. Well, you put it that way, I reckon I'll just have to go, I reckon. Uh, what time are you fellas going to be back down here? Oh, it's ordinary to take us over an hour, will it, Abner? I know, no, if it's sort after of, 6 o'clock, why, well, it's more than likely ready right now. Sort of depends on how much uh, food Elizabeth got cooked up for. <laughs> you mean how long it takes you to eat, bro? <laughs> well, I'll tell you then, I'll come back over here tonight and help you, folks. Well, now, that's awful thought of you every day. I tell you, I, I want to tell you, me, me and Abner appreciate you helping us this way. Yeah, we sure do, Dick. I don't know what we would have did if we hadn't had a friend like you to help us. Oh, now, don't start that, sir. I'm just helping you because I happen to know some of the low-down stunts the Squire Kemp's been pulling on me. I'm just anxious to see you get the best of him if you can. Well, yeah, it does look like he's done everything he could to be a hindrance to us all. Yeah, well, you and Abner had this idea first, opening up a picture show here in Pine Ridge, and I want to see you make a go of it. I'd just like to see you get so much business that Squire have to close his doors over if he does open up. yeah. Well, we both can't make us up there, sir. Well, I know. No. And enough people here in Pine Ridge to support two shows. Why well, no, no. That's why it's important to get this show up and started before Squire gets ready. Yeah, just hope he hear that mouth, man, that Law made this morning over the party now. <laughs> if he won't go higher than a tie. <laughs> uh, what all did you say, Lum? Oh, I don't know. I just told him that we were... Showing our confidence in the future of Pine Ridge by opening up a theater to provide entertainment for them. And yeah. We we're going to have the best pictures that we could buy. Yeah, that's the thing. Of course, I started out with that same speech all us give down for the opening of the school exercises, you know. Heart strings of men that strike the tender board. <laughs> yeah, that's your old standby, Lum. <laughs> well, I don't know. The minute I get up on my feet to give a speech, I, oh, I know what I'm right off into that. Yeah, I don't care what subject Lum's going to talk on. He always starts out the same way. I always just sit there and stop up my ears about the first 30 minutes every time I hear Well, him. I never talk that long on the party line. Well, no, you never today, but I say generally when you, when you go to make a talk, I do that. So I know you're going to give that same one that you gave for years long. Well, I got down to Casey's with them, though. I told them we wanted them all to come out to our grand opening Saturday night and that the admission price would be 25 cents for adults and 10 cents for children. 25 and 10, huh? Yeah. I made us right at home talk about it, all right. Yeah, well, then. Now, you've done a good job, too, Lon. Just as good a job out loud talking as I ever heard you do. Made me sort of anxious to be there myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, that first impression is going to mean a lot. So you want to have things looking as good as you can. I'll be glad to help you. I can get the wife to stay in the store most of the time this week. She's anxious to help any way she can, too. Well, uh, Abner, you might get Elizabeth to stay down in the Jotham Down store. That just gives me an idea. Well, I reckon I could. She's awful busy on the farm right now. She's got a lot of plowing to do, but I'll make mention of it to her and see if I can't get her to stay down there for us. Yeah, and you thought about that. Well, Dick, this is sure nice of you helping us this way. No, I'm like, glad to. Like that old lettered saying of mine, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Huh? Nothing happened. I ain't got time to explain nothing to you today. <laughs> I hate to bring up the subject myself, but it... If we're going to eat supper over at your house, we better be getting started. Yeah, well, I just want to run over and see how you're getting along and see if you're going to work down here tonight. Yeah, we'll meet you back over here by 7.30 at the latest. we got to figure out some different ways of advertising and opening. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, you want to get that well advertised one. You know, it might not be a bad idea to run an ad in the county paper. That comes out Thursday, and most everybody out here reads it from cover to cover. Manny, that's a good subject. Yeah. I thought we might paint a big banner saying we're opening Saturday and get somebody carried around town for the next few days. Yeah, about the best way I know of to get the word passed around, I'm just call up Sister Simpson and tell her we're going to open up Saturday night, but we don't want nobody to find out about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she'll let them know about it, all right. Say, now, that's not a bad idea, Dad. Granny, I believe I'll just call her as quick as we get over to Abner's house. Tell her it's a big secret not to tell a soul. Well, I do know. Look coming yonder. Well... 
That's in what Cedric's doing coming over here. That's right, Boundy. Him and Squire have had a falling out, and he's coming over here trying to get his job back. No, wait a minute. I know. I bet you Squire heard that announcement of mine over the party line this morning and seen where we was going to beat him opening up and just decided not to start no picture show. I don't think he wanted to in the first place. You suppose that's it, sure enough? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he weren't just bluffing all the way through. Never even maimed open up one. Just figured he'd scare us into giving him a third interest in ours. Yeah, and then yesterday when he come over here and seen it weren't going to work, why, he'd just take it out and give up time. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> hope you're right. <laughs> More than likely they had to let Cedric and Grand Bap and all them carpenters go, too. Well, uh, we oughtn't to take them back. They quit us, and I know that they can just stay quit. No, no. Oh, I wouldn't harm them. No, sir. Then is maybe that'll learn them a lesson. They'll know next time to stay with a feller when he hires them. <laughs> Just wait, I'll have some fun out of Cedric here. <laughs> Don't let on now. We just let him stand there and squirm. <laughs> yeah, I'll make him think it first, Mom, and maybe you'll hire him back. <laughs> wait a minute. Well, what do you want, Cedric? Well, why don't you stay over there with Squire Skimp if you think so much of him? Well, Mr. Squire told me to come over here, but he told me not, not to let you all see me. <laughs> not, to, not to let you uh, see you. No, so, uh, he just said to leave some of these handbills over here and then leave right quick, but I reckon you've done saw me now, ain't you? What handbill is that, Cedric? Let me see one of them. Oh, it's just some handbills you had printed up this afternoon. I don't know what it says, but... I reckon I'd better leave before he sees me talking to y'all. Well, now, if you think you're going to get your job back, Cedric, you've got another guest to come in. Oh, I can't quit Mr. Squire now. If you made me sign a contract or something. Well, for goodness sake, Lum, look at this. Look at it. Huh? Announcement. Pine Ridge's new theater, Skimp's Hippodrome, will have its grand opening Friday night. Friday night. I had dog that's the day before us, huh? Well, I'll be dead. Yeah, but look down here. Look there. Admission, five and ten cents. Ah, it looks as though Squire Skimp is determined to have his grand opening first, in spite of all of Lum and Abner's efforts. When your child's appetite fails, especially during the hot days to come, try letting him drink cool, refreshing Horlicks malted milk. Many mothers find that a glass of Horlicks served with meals or between meals, and especially when made with water, actually creates a desire for other food. This is because Horlicks contains a goodly amount of the appetite-producing vitamin B. Horlicks also provides concentrated nourishment without overloading the digestive system. In addition, Horlicks is an excellent source of the vitamins which are so valuable for building firm tissue, strong bones, and for enriching the blood. I suggest you make up a pitcher of Horlicks and keep it in the refrigerator so as to have a cool, refreshing supply always on hand for those thirsty youngsters of yours. And as you know, after it is prepared, it should be given the same careful treatment as fresh milk. You can get it at any druggist in both natural and chocolate flavors. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks. We'll now bid you all good night and good health.